everyone and welcome back to Learning Kitchen Live. My name is Valerie. I'm the Manager of Nutrition Services here at Community Servings and I'm super excited to be back with you today. Before we get started on our wonderful recipe of the day, a few housekeeping items. First and foremost, I want to introduce our wonderful intern, Maya Erickson. She's going to be helping me today. We're so excited to have her, uh, to have her join us. Um, she's been a wonderful addition to our nutrition team the last few weeks. And as usual, I want to give a huge thanks to our sponsor, Boston Scientific. Um, we are so appreciative of all they do for us and their support of Learning Kitchen Live. And a reminder for everyone listening, if you have not done so already, we will have links to a very, very brief survey in the comments section afterwards, along, posted along with the recipe and some uh, nutrition information. But we would really love it if you fill out the survey. It takes truly less than a minute. Uh, we really want your feedback to learn what you're interested in learning about from us. Um, so with that, we're going to go ahead and get started today. Um, today we are making Mediterranean chicken with pineapple salsa. And the thing that's wonderful about this recipe is its absolute versatility. Um, I am doing this with chicken tenders today and I'm actually going to marinate them and then just quickly pan cook them but you could do this with a variety of proteins and you could also do this on a grill you could make skewers or kebabs out of it there's so many ways you could do this and I'll talk about that a little bit but with that I'm gonna go ahead and get started because I want to get this chicken marinating for a few minutes and then in a few moments I'll turn it over to Maya and she will make the salsa that's gonna go with it this, this recipe just screamed summer to me. Um, it's all the flavors that you want in a light summer meal, um, especially when it's really hot outside. And again, this would be a really great recipe to make on the grill if you have access to one on a hot summer day. So I'm gonna start with the marinade. Uh, and I need to reference my, my recipe for this because there's a lot, of, a, a lot of little amounts of things, but they're all common things that most people have in their kitchen. Um, so I'm going to start with a couple of tablespoons of olive oil, three tablespoons. And I'm going to mix the marinade in this little bowl here, but then put everything in a Ziploc bag, which is a really easy way, easy and mess-free way to marinate things. So three tablespoons of olive oil and a tablespoon of red wine vinegar. And then I'm going to add some lemon juice and the zest of uh, one lemon. So, and by the way, before you zest citrus, you should always wash it, wash it off. Maybe that goes without saying, but um, you know, we don't normally eat the peels of citrus, so sometimes you can not think about it. You always wanna wash it with uh, soap and water before you zest it and put it into your food. Um, the thing about marinades is they're a really great way to add quick flavor to whatever protein you're cooking. Um, they, you know, a common misbelief is that, you know, protein or the marinade gets really soaked up and absorbed into the protein that you're cooking. Um, and if you marinate longer, it will get absorbed more flavor. And that's true a little bit, but you also need to be careful with marinades. If you leave protein, especially like chicken, meat, and fish in a marinade for too long, the outside can get a little bit mushy. Um, so you don't want to do that. Longer is not necessarily better, but, um, Marinades really just flavor the outside layer of whatever protein <clears throat> you're, excuse me, you're cooking. They, they don't really get soaked in, but it's that hit of flavor on the outside that can really make your protein shine, especially when you're cooking something like chicken. You can give it a lot of flavor with not a lot of salt or fat, um, and then cook it up really quickly. The on the other hand, um, brining, which is, I think that's, 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 about, that's about the whole lemon. Um, when you brine something, you're, you're putting a protein in almost like a bath of like a salt and sugar solution. And brining does really absorb into a protein like meat, like you always think of like, I always think of brining like turkeys at Thanksgiving. It actually pulls some of the water out of the, the meat and replaces it with the brine, which makes everything really juicy and tender and moist when you cook it. Um, so this is not a brine, you usually brine for like 24 hours. This is just a simple marinade. 
And even though we're only going to marinate this for maybe like 10 minutes at this point, um, it's going to impart a lot of really good flavor on the chicken. All right, so I also want um, a couple of tablespoons of lemon juice. I think about a half a lemon is going to be right. I think you've all heard me say this before on here. This little citrus juicing device is like my favorite thing. Um, you can buy them at the grocery store for a couple of dollars, and I'm actually going to hand it to Maya because she's going to use it for some limes in a few minutes. Um, I'm going to add two garlic cloves that have been minced and some dried oregano and thyme. And for this recipe, you could use fresh herbs or you could use dried herbs. A general rule of thumb is if you're using dried herbs, but a recipe calls for fresh herbs, just use about half the amount. Um, the dried herbs are much more potent. Um, so this recipe uses oregano and thyme, which are kind of classic Mediterranean flavors, but you could, you could use whatever you want in here or omit these if you're not, if you're not a big fan. So that was about a teaspoon and a half of each of those, which is a lot of dried herbs. But again, this is a marinade and we're not gonna use all of it. So not all of this is gonna end up on the chicken when we finally cook it. So it's good to add that little extra burst of flavor. And then finally, I'm gonna add a half a teaspoon of salt and a half a teaspoon of black pepper. and also about a quarter cup of diced red onion. I didn't toss that in here yet. So the easiest way to do a marinade with protein, I think is to put it in a giant zip top bag and then you can put everything in here and let the marinade work its magic for a little while. The one exception to um, marinades being absorbed into the protein you're cooking is tofu. Tofu is like a bit like a sponge, and if you leave tofu in a marinade for a while, a lot of it will get absorbed, which is frankly delicious, but um, it just doesn't happen. Like You're, you're not going to get marinades sinking really deeply into your chicken. So I'm going to put on gloves because I'm handling raw chicken right now, but if you are at home, you would just want to make sure when you're done, you wipe your surfaces down and uh, wash your hands really well. So I'm using chicken breast tenders and you could use, again, you could use chicken breasts, you could use thighs, you could use whatever you like. Um, I like the tenders because they actually just cook really quickly. Um, I find myself cooking tenders a lot for my kids too. There's something about the size is I think very appealing to, to kids because it's not a huge chunk of meat. But it, my, my reasoning for the choice was because they cook really quick. Oops, that's a little tricky to cut open the gloves. All right. So this recipe was originally written for kebabs on the grill, but we don't have an inside grill here, um, or at least not one that's accessible to us while we're teaching Learning Kitchen Live. And also kebabs, I, I think, are fun and great but they can be hard to manage. And if you have wooden skewers, you have to soak them beforehand. Um, the, the benefit of kebabs is you're using smaller chunks of meat, usually your vegetables, so you get a little bit more marinade and flavor on them. But I, um, I feel like for inside pan cooking, just regular old tenders are perfect. So what I'm gonna do, or what I am doing here, is just kind of almost like massaging the marinade into the chicken. And I know this looks not so attractive, but it will be super delicious and pretty when it's all done and plated up. Um, so that's it. I'm gonna leave this alone for a few minutes while Maya makes the salsa. The one thing you do wanna note about marinating meat is, you know, I'm gonna leave it here on the counter because we're only gonna be in here for another, before I start cooking this, probably another like 10 minutes at the most. And it's, I feel like it's safe. The chicken is, is cold, the, actually the, the room we're in is really quite cold. So it'll be fine. If you are gonna marinate meat, 
for more than like 15 or 20 minutes, I would recommend putting it in the refrigerator for food safety purposes. Certainly if you're marinating overnight, it goes in the refrigerator, but for a few minutes on the counter, if you're gonna cook it right away, I think that's okay. So we're gonna let the marinade do its thing and Maya is going to make our pineapple salsa that's gonna go with this. All right, hi there, uh, I'm Maya. I'm the food service intern here now and I'm really excited to show you guys this pineapple salsa recipe. Who doesn't think of summer when they think of pineapple? Um, so we have our pineapples here. You want to um, dice them so that you have these really small squares for the salsa, looking for those bite-sized pieces. Um, in terms of pineapple, we use uh, like a pre-chopped pineapple chunks here just for like ease of preparation. The other options you have would be to purchase a whole pineapple. It's going to be the most cost-effective route. Um, you definitely have enough left over for some snacks for a couple days. Um, if you do shop for a whole pineapple, you want to look for a pineapple that has green leaves. If they look brown or wilted, that's a sign that the pineapple isn't quite fresh. And then in terms of um, selecting the right one, you want to just press the body of the pineapple and it should be firm but slightly soft. So you want a little bit of give. And then for color, you're looking for something that's like a greenish yellow. So those are all signs that the pineapple is um, ripe, fresh, and um, will be good when you cut into it. Another option would be to do canned pineapple. Um, you would just want to drain out the water, obviously, before you cut it up. So you have a few different options just depending on what works best for you. I know some people don't like to deal with cutting a whole pineapple. Um, so luckily you have the either pre-chopped or the canned option. Um, so we have our pineapple all set to go here. And then we also want some onions. We used uh, red onion here for the base. I used about half of an onion. Um, and onions are really great. Um, they're a good source of soluble fiber. So if you're somebody who's worried about like cholesterol or blood sugar, soluble fiber can help to slow the absorption of cholesterol and sugar into the bloodstream. So it's really great if you're trying to manage those things. Um, and yeah, I think that's pretty much it for the onions. Oh, and if you're sensitive to onions, you find that they cause heartburn, you might also try shallots or green onions. Those can be um, a little bit less strong. So we have those two ingredients. The other thing you're gonna want to grab is some cilantro. So as you can see, we have fresh cilantro here. Again, you just wanna make sure, with, as with any fresh um, food, you just wanna make sure it's rinsed off, especially with um, herbs. A lot of dirt can get stuck in between these really small leaves. And so we're gonna use about half a bunch here. We need a half cup. And then when you're preparing the cilantro, you just wanna make sure to cut off those bottom stems. We're really just looking for the leaves and we don't want these stems, so you can just discard them, put them to the side. And then we're just gonna start from the top and chop the cilantro. So cilantro, it's very, the leaves are very delicate. So you want to make sure that when you're working with cilantro um, that you add it either towards the end of cooking or just completely raw like we're doing it. We're not going to cook this salsa. We're just serving it raw. Um, and cilantro is really great. Uh, it's easy to grow at home. Um, you don't need a big garden or anything. It can just live in your windowsill. So if you live in an apartment, um, like having some cilantro thyme, basil, herbs like that growing in the window. So it can be a really great way to just add some flavor to your meals. I'm just gonna throw that in there. And fresh herbs are a great way to add flavor without adding any sodium or like added fat, which is usually where we get a lot of the flavor from, but we're trying to, you know, be healthy and um, reduce our consumption of some of those nutrients. Uh, so we have our cilantro in there. And then we're gonna want about three tablespoons of lime juice to finish off this salsa. We have our squeezer here. And it's really just gonna depend on how much, um, like how juicy the lime is. So these ones are actually pretty, pretty juicy. juicy. Yeah, so I'd say probably just one lime will be enough for this salsa here. And again, that um, lime is just adding a little bit of acid, helping to balance out the sweetness from the pineapple. All right, and then we can just mix them all together. Here's the salt, if you wanna put a little pinch of that in. A little pinch of salt. All right, and this is 
is going to look so great when we're done mixing it. All those bright colors are a good sign of antioxidants. So these are just naturally occurring compounds in food that can help reduce inflammation in our bodies. So if you're someone who deals with um, like arthritis or migraines, having a lot of like plant-based bright foods in the diet can help uh, can help with that. All right. While you're finishing that up, I'm actually going to I what I did here was I heated. Um, about a tablespoon of oil up in a nonstick pan and I'm just going to start cooking my chicken. It's going to go pretty quickly. Ideally, this would marinate for probably 20 minutes. I know we've like, we've done this really quickly, but I felt like I wanted to show how easy making the marinade was as well. So, um, uh, so the magic of video here, you can pretend that it was marinating for 20 minutes. You know, along the lines of what Maya was saying at the end there, with it, which was a really good point, the when you were talking about the cilantro and um, the herbs, and it's always a good reminder that one of the things we love doing here is adding flavor to food without adding too much salt. Mm -hmm. And when you add herbs to anything, like er herbs and spices, so in this case, even with the chicken, the like the oregano and the thyme, it gives the food so much flavor. This was probably about two pounds of chicken and um, only a half a teaspoon of salt. So very little sodium overall when someone's eating this. All right. So I'm gonna let these cook for a moment. I, uh, I don't wanna overcrowd the pan, so I'm not gonna put the last few pieces in. But yeah, we uh, this is like a super bright, flavorful salsa and I think I think way back when we first started doing Learning Kitchen Live over a year ago, which is which is hard to believe, one of the first recipes we did was a salmon with like a some kind of pineapple salsa mm -hmm. too. I need to look back and reference it, but this salsa would be really good on salmon, on pork, on chicken, on tofu. I'm not sure I would love it with beef, but um, you could put this on tacos. It would be yeah. actually delicious shrimp on shrimp, 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 really shrimp tacos. Good. Yeah. yeah. Um, so you could do this, use this salsa in a variety of ways. Frankly, I would probably just eat it out of the bowl like that. Yeah. I love I love onions and flavorful things like that, um, so it wouldn't bother me. Another thing that I was thinking would be delicious to add to this would be a jalapeno. Mm -hmm. um, if you like spice, that would be really good. Um, so you can dress this up in all kinds of ways. Oh, I wish you could, I say this all the time, I wish you all could smell how good this smells over here. Even though it marinated for only a few minutes, you really smell like the garlic and the herbs coming off of it. I'm gonna give it another minute and then flip it over. This is truly how fast these chicken breast tenders cook, which mm -hmm. is so nice. I think if you were doing this on the grill, you might wanna get whole chicken breasts. I think they're a little easier to manage on the grill grates, but um, if you're gonna pan fry or pan fry them, this is perfect. You know, in the summer, salsas are a great way to jazz up anything really easily, and even store-bought store -bought salsas, like, mm -hmm. you know, put some store-bought salsa over grilled meat and you have like a really delicious meal. I feel like they're also good sides to bring if you're going to like a barbecue yeah. or something. They pack really well. You know, with food safety in the summertime, one of the things that, you know, we worry about more is like proteins and dairy-based things sitting out in the sun. A salsa will be fine for a little while. Mm -hmm. Not forever, but yeah. for a little while. All right. One thing I do want to say about marinating food, and again, this may be uh, common sense to most people, is that you should never reuse a marinade. Like mm -hmm. I, like first of all, never take the marinade that's been with the raw meat and put it back on something for extra flavoring because you have all the, the juice from the raw meat in there as well. Um, but also don't reuse it. Like I would not save this and then put some other meat in it. It's just a, becomes a food safety hazard. You never want to do that. Um, just toss it. But one thing you might have noticed was I had two pounds of meat 
and very little marinade. Like it was probably less than a cup. You, a little goes a long way, so you don't feel like you're wasting too much of it. All right, these just need a couple more minutes to, maybe not even, to, to finish cooking up. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a question about uh, type of oil oh. for, for uh, pan cooking. Wonderful question. I'm doing this with olive oil. Um, you could use olive oil, canola oil, vegetable oil, really anything. Um, we're not going for super high heat here. Like I'm not, uh, when you, with oils, what matters when you're cooking is some oils have a lower, what's called or a lower or a higher smoke point, meaning the point at which it will burst into flames if you heat it too much. So olive oil actually is a pretty low smoke point. So you don't want, and it'll, it can burn too. Like you, you don't want to um, cook over really high heat for a really long period of time with olive oil. It'll get like bitter tasting almost. But things like canola oil is a little better. Peanut oil has a really high smoke point. Grapeseed oil does too, but any of those will be fine. I always like the little, the hint of olive flavor in olive oil, and I like the health benefits of it. But all of those would be suitable. I think avocado is another one that has a oh, higher yes. smoke point too. Yes, you're right, avocado oil. Yeah. And I even used to be able to find the avocado oil at BJ's. So if there's somebody who shops at like a bulk place like Costco or BJ's, they might have a larger container. Um, that is good to know. Yeah. My, my default cooking oils at home are olive oil and canola oil and grapeseed oil. I have all three of those. I kind of almost use them interchangeably, but I more often use olive oil when you can, when it matters that you get a little bit of the flavor in it. So like if I'm roasting vegetables, I'll usually use olive oil because I like having a little bit of that flavor. All right, I'm gonna just check the temperature on these in a moment. As we've also said, you know, you, most cooks, most experienced, or cooks with some experience can tell when a piece of meat is at the, the doneness that they want. Um, you know, this is like, it feels pretty firm, I'm guessing it's done, but we don't wanna guess when we're cooking, uh, especially poultry, we wanna know for sure. So I'm gonna use my instant read thermometer and check a thick part of the meat. And it's actually not quite done. We have about 10 degrees to go. You want it to get to 165 and it's about 155. So I'm gonna give it like another minute to cook. Um, just so important to make sure that you're only eating food that is perfectly done. <laughs> Yeah, I think that's really important too, like when reheating leftovers. Yes. Reheating to about 165. There's another question. Yes. Um, just going back to the salsa. If you didn't have pineapple, is there another type of fruit you could use? Ooh, Ooh that's a good question. I feel like mango I was might just be gonna say. a good substitution for pineapple. Um, I think if you wanted to stay in the tropical realm, yes. mango or like papaya might be really good, but go ahead. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think of like another fruit that's maybe a little bit more conventional. Peach. A peach. Okay. Yeah, a peach. Actually, this would, a peach salsa would probably be really delicious. Um, yeah. You know, honestly, like good old tomato salsa with mm -hmm. these flavorings is 100% delicious too. Yeah. But that's a great question. You know, I think the goal for us here at Learning Kitchen Live is to always make sure we're cooking food that is interesting to you, maybe gives you new ideas, but remains like available and affordable to everybody. Mm -hmm. um, so one of the things Maya and I were talking about before was, you know, we used um, the the pre-cut pineapple from the grocery store. You could buy your own pineapple. You could use canned pineapple with this dish if you really wanted to. Um, it wouldn't be quite as like crisp and bright flavored, but if you really like pineapple, buy a can of pineapple chunks and use those. Just drain them and give them a quick rinse beforehand and they will still be delicious. Um, and that's like a super affordable, easy to find option. Yeah. Right, give us one more test here. Ah, it's taking a few more minutes than I thought. Some of these thinner pieces I think are done. These are great questions though. Um, I think when all is said and done, the ingredients for this recipe, which included two pounds of chicken breast tenders, 
um, plus the fresh cut pineapple um, and the cilantro. So there were a lot of fresh ingredients. Cost me just around like $22. But this is gonna feed, like this is enough to feed six people. If you add a grain side and a vegetable with this, you know, you're probably looking at feeding six people for like maybe 25 to $30. So it's not as like Jessica's recipe that she did last week. She did this delicious farro with Swiss chard and tomatoes, which I actually made this week. It was delicious. Um, she made that whole meal, I think it was for like $11 and it wow. was, it made a lot of food. So this was a little more expensive, partly because of the chicken and the pineapple, mm -hmm. but still really affordable when you think about it. Especially when you compare it to ordering out. I mean, yeah. cooking at home is always going to be the more cost effective option. There's one other question about uh, marinades making your own versus buying. Are there benefits? Oh, that's a really good question. Um, so the question was if you didn't hear Ryan uh, read that to me, was the, the benefits of making your own marinade versus store bought ones? You know, I think there's a ton of really good store-bought marinades out mm -hmm. there, and actually in a pinch, just salad dressing is a great marinade. Um, I like making my own when I can because I can control the sugar and salt in it. They can be really, they can have a lot of sugar. Uh, store-bought marinades can just have a lot of sugar and salt and preservatives in them, and it's not that they're bad, but my preference is to make my own and just control for all of that. Um, one of my favorite things to do, though, is if I have access to fresh fish, um, especially fresh swordfish, and it's affordable to buy Greek salad dressing. Um, Ken's is a Ken's is a brand that's very prevalent here in the Northeast. Um, Ken's Greek sa Greek salad dressing, marinate some swordfish in it, and pan fry it or grill it, and it makes for a really easy, really delicious, quick meal. All right, I think we're good here. I we have chicken that is cooked to the right temperature. So for poultry, you always want to get your, your poultry cooked to reach 165 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, so that's what I was waiting for. You don't want it to be 160. You don't want it to be 164. It's really important. And that's because that is the temperature at which um, harmful bacteria will all be killed and you know it's safe to eat. So it's, it's an important thing to keep track of. So with that, I'm gonna plate up a couple pieces and would you like to put some salsa on yeah, that? Yeah, absolutely. And there we have it, chicken or Mediterranean style chicken with a pineapple salsa. And I hope we've inspired you to try some new things or variations of this. Um, it's, this is, again, a great summer dish because it's easy to prepare, doesn't take a long time in the kitchen, and super flavorful. Um, so thank you again, everybody, for joining Learning Kitchen Live. Thank you to our friends at Boston Scientific. Uh, the recipe and a wonderful handout on cooking with herbs and the benefits of cooking with herbs will be available um, in the comments section, as well as the links to our survey that we would love for you to take. So thank you so much, and we'll see you next week. Bye.